So how do you make a million dollars in one year? So in this episode, I'm gonna share the two sides of making a million dollars. I'm gonna share you the millionaire math, five reasons why people miss on opportunities to make a million dollars, and some questions that you need to ask yourself at the end of this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And uh, again, our goal is to get to 150,000 subs. So therefore, we can award to a church, charity, or nonprofit a check of $5,000 to help them fund their mission because our YouTube channel is continuing to grow. We want to bless them, but we need to get to 150,000 subs. So please, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and help us out with this cause so we can cut this check to help them out. So you want to make a million dollars, huh? No problem. It's not that complicated at all. Let me break it down. You see, back in the day, Making a million dollars was like, oh my gosh, you're a millionaire, you're a millionaire, you're a millionaire. Today, there are so many more people making millions of dollars every year based on the data they've been tracking, so therefore this isn't very complicated at all. In fact, the way things are going, inflation, cost of rising costs of goods and services, you're gonna have to have to make a million dollars one day, so therefore you just can keep up with the cost of living. And when think about it, when's the last time a $100 bill really meant a $100 bill? Today, a $100 bill is like 20 years ago carrying around a $20 bill. So when you're looking at money, you're looking at finances, there's so many reasons why you need to make a million bucks, but we're gonna give you the strategies and the metrics, so therefore it can be more real to you based on the data I'm gonna share with you because making a million dollars, just like any other salary, is simply a formula. So there are two sides of making a million dollars. First side is the spiritual and mental side, emotional side, of making a million dollars. You know, when you're looking at money, we interviewed Rabbi Lappin, okay? And he was talking about that the spiritual asset of that money is something that you just can't put on a spreadsheet. I mean, how many guys have felt that? It's, you're looking at somebody like, yeah, how are you making a million dollars? And how are you making a million dollars? And how are you looking like you're making a million dollars, but you broke? See, that's the spiritual side of money. So you have to get your mind right when it comes to finance. You've got to get your mind and attitude right in check to make sure that you are understanding that there's an aspect to this uh, area of finance that's just not necessarily in bars and graphs. There's so many aspects of the spiritual and mental side of money because if you can have a degree or you can have an opportunity to make a million dollars, but your attitude sucks and everything around you is a problem, the spiritual and mental aspects has a way of killing your million dollar income opportunities. The other aspect of this is financial. And, my, and to break down the how to, financial means what industry are you in? How many volume and units do you have to sell to make a million dollars? What's your margin or profit when you, you sell a uh, product or service or, or obtain a salary or a contract? What's the skill and time frame necessary for you to compact all those efforts so therefore in 12 months you make a million dollars? So let's talk about the millionaire math. Again, money is nothing more than a formula. So a couple of things I want you to pay attention to here. Which industry are you making money in? Are you making money in technology? Are you making money in real estate? Are you making money in, in, in food and beverage? Are you making money in manufacturing? Or are you making money in the insurance industry, which I'm part of? So since I'm a part of the insurance industry, I'm gonna share with you my millionaire math and how to make a million dollars in the insurance industry. And then you just have to fill in these numbers based on your industry, based on your product or in service, because the math is generally the same. So let's take a look at the typical life insurance agent entering the insurance industry on what their millionaire math is. If I'm an insurance agent, this is how I would go about making a million dollars in the insurance industry. Which by the way, if you were to Google, if you were to Google the industry most likely to make a millionaire, guess what's at the top? Financial services. So I want to share with you a financial services compensation breakdown of millionaire math so therefore, the typical insurance agent that's entering the financial services industry has a track of getting themselves to make a million dollars a year in the next 12 months, and it's not impossible. So let's take a look. Most life insurance agents will enter the industry as a solo, independent contractor, career agent, me, myself, and I, they're saying high contract, high commission contract because the high commissions I get per my sale, the easier this math is. And that's true, that is correct. So let's take a look at this. Let's say a life insurance agent sells a $100 a month policy. And at the $100 a month policy, they're at a 50% commission rate at their agency. Well, if that's the case, then this agent for the next 12 months, 
they have to sell 1,667 policies that year in order to make a million dollars. Let me break that down further. That's 139 sales a month. Let me break that down further. That's approximately 35 sales a week. So if this agent is working seven days a week, that's five sales a day. There's a millionaire math. So the question you gotta ask yourself, oh man, that sucks, I'm working all the time. I know, but think about this. If it takes you 12 months to knock this out, every day you're working, think about this. Every day you're working, seven days a week, four weeks a month, 12 months throughout the year, guess what, at the end of the year, you're a cash flow millionaire. <laughs> cash flow millionaire, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You are a cash flow millionaire. Let me break this down even further. I mean, what's the work involved, man? So it's interesting that you say on 1,667 sales, 139 sales a month, 35 sales a week, but what's the actual work to prepare? Because you know, in sales, in business, it's just not the transaction. It's all the work outside, the negotiations, the appointments, the meetings, the phone calls, the setup, in order to make the sale happen. So what is this scenario uh, on a 50% close ratio? So what's the scenario 50% close ratio? Let's say your sales ability, your entrepreneurial ability to close deals is a 50% close ratio, okay? By the way, it's pretty good. 50% close ratio. That means you have to set with the client and do 3,334 proposals that year, of which half of them say, eh, I'll think about it, not for me, not this time, not this month, not this year. So in other words, 50% of people that you actually have a proposal for, 50% of them basically say no, or not now. But the other 50% say, yes, makes sense to me, let's move forward, let's do the transaction, let me sign the contracts, here's my premium, boom. But before you go to the proposal stage, guess what? You gotta have appointment set. So I'm doing the reverse math. I'm doing the activity necessary to lead you to 1,667 sales. Which means that if I do that, before I get to proposals, I need to do 6,668 appointments set in my calendar for that calendar year. If I break that down, that's 555 appointments set for that month, 138 appointments a week. So there it is. So if you wanna make a million dollars selling life insurance by yourself at a 50% commission contract, this is the math. So there you go. I just gave you the millionaire math for a me, myself, and I operation, being a solopreneur, running a sales organization with just yourself. Here's the flip side. What happens if you say, you know what? Let me think about building a business. Let me start with a small team. Let me start with a team of guys. Okay, let's put together a team of guys, and instead of one person approaching the millionaire math, you've got a millionaire math of, 10 insurance agents that you've recruited into your agency. And when that agency manager leads a sales meeting on Monday morning, all right, let's go get them, okay? These guys go out and they do sales. But now the sales manager, instead of individually selling, like his counterpart was, this agency manager is now leading, coaching, teaching, and mentoring. So instead of making commissions by himself by having to be beholden to a transaction, which up here is beholden to a commission, a sales manager now earns a spread. In other words, if the insurance manager has a commission rate up here and the agents are commissioned here and they get paid at their commission level, that spread, that difference, then goes to the agency manager. Okay? Spread, profit, and the benefit of running a sales team. Let's take a look at this. So in other words, this agency manager makes money on $300. So every time a sale goes down from one of his agents, that sales manager earns $300. Now, how does that sales manager make a million dollars? By engaging and involving, by coaching, leading, inspiring, and developing his agents. Well, these guys gotta do 3,333 sales a year. And when they gotta do 303 sales a year, if you break that down, that's 270 sales per month if you break that down per week, that's 69 sales per week amongst 10 guys, that's approximately seven sales per agent per week. Think about that. What's easier to do as a human being? 35 sales a week by yourself 
and having all that stress and pressure and uh, elements towards burnout just brewing in the mix? Or do you engage your 10 agents to sell, on average, seven sales per agent per person per week? What's easier to do? What do you think is easier to do? I'll tip you off in a little secret. I figured this stuff out in 2012 because for 11 to 12 years, I was this guy. I was this guy, and just so you know, I didn't make my cash flow millions as a solo guy. But I'm not gonna digress at this moment. Let me continue with the millionaire math. So if you go here and say, okay, Matt, let's use the 50, same 50% close ratio. So that means that your team, as a sales manager, you're leading your team to set up 6,667 proposals of which originally they had to set up 13,334 appointments for that year. So in order to get to 667 proposals to get to 333,000 sales, you originally needed to set 13,334 appointments for that year. Let me break that down even further. That's 1,111 appointments for each month, which leads to 277 appointments per week set forth by your team of agents going out and doing their part collectively as an organization. And so here's the reasons why people miss out on opportunities like this. Here's some reasons. Number one, they underestimate the work necessary to get the job done and the commitment level to get the job done. They don't do the math. They just kind of wing it. Oh man, I made $1,000 here, I made $5,000 here. And they never put together a formula to come up with a strategy that's systematic and duplicatable month in, month out. When I was a solo guy trying to attempt these goals by myself, here's how my income would look. Boom, spike in income. Next month, drop. Then it would work, work, work again. Prospect, prospect, prospect. Set up appointment, set up appointment. Boom, spike in income. Close deals, close deals. Awesome, celebrate. Next month, drop. All right, do the work, work, work. Proposals, make phone calls, do the marketing again. Psh, spike in income. My income would go like that. Boom, boom, boom. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how emotionally unstable that feels and was. Until I said, you know what? Let me start building an organization. Let me start building a team. Let me create systems and process that made me successful. The blueprint that made me translate and codify what I learned to teach that to other people. So therefore they can avoid a lot of mistakes I made in my 12 years as an independent insurance agent. And we duplicate simple, duplicatable sales. So please don't underestimate the numbers necessary or the command level. Number two is preparation. They just kind of go with the flow. We'll see what happens. You'll never get to become a millionaire by just going with the flow. You need to prepare. Number three, you need to have a mentor that you're accountable to. Entrepreneurs have a board, a board of directors. They have people that are accountable that they've, they pay to be a director. They pay to coach them and guide them to say, hey, we're going to have a meeting here once a month. My board of directors, here's my monthly budget of my quota, the expenses, the sales, the metrics, here's what I gotta do, and the board holds you accountable. Hey, Matt, you said you do this last month, how come you didn't get it done? You're right, I need to correct that. Listen, do you still want us to be as your board member, but do you still want us to be your mentor if we're coaching you to do certain things and you're not following through? Should we resign from the board? You're like, no, 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 I need you as the board because I need you to coach you and guide me. You see what I'm talking about? That's what a mentor and accountability does in your life. And actually, these guys help you install discipline Oh, what a nasty word, huh? Discipline. But here's what I realized. If you're not disciplined, you'll never become a millionaire. Point blank. Now, you might become a millionaire just by winging it, and you make it one year. You get lucky. They say, the saying goes, you do it once, every dog has his day. Do it twice, it's a quinces. Three times in a row, not over 10 years, but you do it three times in a row. You, my friends, then know what you're doing. You are the ultimate prover of your concept to become a millionaire. Number four. People miss out on making an opportunity because they think uh, they don't need any faith. I mean, I'll tell you this. Right? And by the way, I'm not talking about Jesus here. I'm not talking about uh, shoving the Bible down your throat. You need to have faith in you. You need to have faith in your people. You need to have faith in your system. You need to have faith in your crusade. You need to have faith in your movement. You have to have, to have faith in what you're doing. And that means that in spite of all the things that come your way, you still push through. You have a bad day. You still have faith. You push through. Somebody charges back a, a contract, they return a product, a large order, you still have faith to replace that order. Somebody quits on you, you're paying a large salary, their job ain't done, you have faith that you're gonna hire somebody to fill their position. 
Faith is a large part of entrepreneurship. Faith is a large part of being a first generation cash flow millionaire. And last but not least, people miss out on opportunities to make a million dollars because they allow fear to overwhelm them. Is fear part of this? Yes, because you kind of like on your own. I remember first starting my business, and I went full time. It was 2003. Last time I took a paycheck from somebody else was 2003. It's 2022 now, so it's been a long time, almost 20 years since I took a paycheck from somebody else to depend on, to live on, to pay my bills. But I remember that first year, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm doing this for the very first time. There's no more lifeline. Like if I don't make this work, I'm not getting paid. Not only am I not getting paid, I can't pay my staff, I can't pay my payroll, I can't pay my landlord, I can't pay my lease, I can't pay payroll taxes. Everybody's gonna leave me if I don't get the job done. It's a whole lot of pressure on you. So, so I, a lot of people never get this done because they buy into the fear more than they do their faith. See, what gives me confidence every day to go out and do what I do is because I know my numbers, I know my metrics, I know my blueprints, I know what to do on a daily basis, monthly basis, over and over and over and over again. And I know all I gotta do is get to work. If you're the type of person that you know what? Ah, just get to the office at 12 o'clock, it's my business anyway. No discipline, you're just winging it, you're not getting the job done, guess what starts happening to your business? People stop trusting you, they lose faith in you, and guess what happens? Fear sets in on your end. Because people are leaving you, contract getting canceled, customers aren't coming back, guess what starts happening? Fear sets in. So these are the five reasons why people miss out on opportunities and just be more direct. The how-to, this is the easy part. How Financial and the how-to is right here, boom. This is easy, right? It's math and effort, math and work, math and commitment. Math and picking up the phone. Math and pounding the pavement. Math and getting to work every day. Very simple. The hard part is this. <laughs> it's the spiritual and the mental. Especially in the days that you don't feel like it. And the days that you doubt yourself. And the days that you say, you know what? Am I really gonna get there? Is it really that important for me to hit this goal? That's where the spiritual side kicks in. That is all right here. These are the five reasons why people miss that opportunity. That is the spiritual side right there. Now, for some of you guys <laughs> that are faith-based, you want to get closer to Jesus, awesome. Start a business and have a big goal and a big dream like making a million dollars if you're not making it already. See how close you get to your, your God. See how close you get to your Savior. <laughs> There's many times I'm like, oh, Lord, what's going on? Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> I tell you this, man. After I've seen that happen, Jesus take the wheel and see what God can do in my life, see what Jesus can do in my life, intercede and make things happen. I'm like, how did that happen? How did this deal clip? How did this person come through? Oh my gosh. To see the hand of God work in our business, <laughs> to all the glory and praise be to Him, right? Just to see God work in your life, and that's the benefit of being an entrepreneur, at least on my end. I'm just sharing with my personal experience. Just to see God manifest all His promises when I exercise faith versus fear and see this millionaire math you know, one of our guys reminded me of a very important saying, pray like it's up to God, but work like it's up to you. See how that partnership works together. So some final thoughts here, final thoughts. This journey will invoke and attract a lot of distractions. You gotta know that. Family distractions, kid distractions, health distractions, financial distractions, vendor distractions, legal distractions, spiritual Right? Everything. Spiritual warfare, all of that stuff going on. Okay? You're going to face a lot of distractions. The question for you, though, is are you anticipating it? That's why people buy life insurance, right? Because they anticipate a distraction, a change in health, sadly, a, a death in the family. That's what life insurance does. It anticipates distraction. Therefore, it minimizes the financial toll it takes on the family. So, therefore, the family can mourn and celebrate one's life versus, oh my gosh, doubling and tripling the pain and 100xing the pain because of the financial indebtedness that the family member left behind. So you have to eliminate distractions. So therefore you can avoid distractions because if you eliminate distractions, the more time than you, my friends, can stay focused. Second one is improvise, adapt, and overcome. This uh, German philosopher has got this amazing quote. It says, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. Your goal to a million dollar income is gonna cause you to improvise, it's gonna cause you to adapt, and cause you to overcome. Because if you don't know how to adapt, guess what? You're gonna get derailed, 
You can sit back and say, ah, forget about it. Next year versus it could be this year. And last but not least, stay alert, stay alive, stay curious. I want you guys to put this in order. Making a million dollars will take some effort. Of course it will, okay? You just have to be on a track. So you know what? No matter what happens in our expenses, my income is always gonna be here. So if my expenses are right here, you've got to be in a position to say, you know what, I'll have my income up here. So if it expense rise up, boom, I'm way above these. I have financial altitude. The problem with most people here, they're right here and they're just hovering right above debt. They're just hovering right above their expenses and boom, things, things can easily overwhelm them and that's when a lot of fear starts kicking in. So before I let you go and you really want to unpack this subject matter, please check out this video right here, the five traits of a first generation cash flow faith-based millionaire and check out this other video here which is how i turned my first 500 dollars investment to start a business into a 45 million dollar company so please check out this video here if you want to continue to unpack and deepen this conversation if you're watching this on facebook make sure to click like and follow our business page money smart guy if you're watching this on youtube make sure to click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode from dallas texas i'm your money smart guy and until we meet again continue to live smart continue to live smart and be money smart today Let's <laughs> go.